Um, I guess we should talk about uh, what happened last week with Paul de Malignaggi. Of course, um, you know, they put out that, Connor in the UFC put out that picture of Malinaji led on the floor. It looked like he'd been knocked down or knocked out even. And of course, then Paulie Malinaji went around and um, he, he was pissed. He was uh, he was kind of going crazy and uh, talking shit about Connor. He said he's cheap. He said that um, he doesn't look after his sparring partners and all this type of stuff. He said that he's arrogant. He talked a lot of shit. Uh, and then to rebuttal that, the UFC, well, I say the UFC, Dana White, that is the UFC, I guess. Um, put out a very short clip of um, Connor and Ma- Malinaji sparring. Did you see that? I'm assuming you I did. I did see the clip. And this it started a few weeks back. I guess there was a, um, a, the picture that Connor put out of Malinaji on the ground and him standing over him. And they were kind of just putting out stuff from the, the training camp to make Malinaji, who, you know, I, I don't really know shit about boxing, but I'm assuming he's a fairly accomplished boxer, former champion, correct? Yeah, um, yeah. Well, Malinaji was a former champion, and listen, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on Malinaji at all, but um, he, he was a good boxer. He was a former world champion, but any time that he stepped up and uh, fought anybody of note, like a Ricky Hatton or an Amir Khan, anyone like that, uh, anyone that you might have heard of, he lost. Right. He was still a very, very good boxer, still a world champion, and of course, he's been retired for a while, but still, that said, uh, you know, still still an accomplished boxer. Um, now, Malinaji is kicking off saying it's ridiculous saying release the whole footage yeah. he's saying that he won rounds 1 to 10 and rounds 11 and 12 he was gassed apparently he just got off a plane and all this type of stuff but I gotta say but is it a he's faux pas coming off bad here let me ask you a question is it kind of a um from the training perspective, right? Because I think his point was, and I, you know, correct me if I'm mistaken, that it's like, don't put out pictures where you're making it look like you're kicking my ass and you're making me look dumb. I'm still a, somebody who's looking for respect in the fight game. I'm helping you prepare for this. And you're kind of through social media and through, you know, Instagram photos and making it look like I'm a fucking chump. Why, you know, you're not really supposed to do that. Did Conor McGregor cross a line by putting out that stuff and making Malinaji look bad? Uh, I don't know. Maybe. Maybe, but I mean, yes and no. You know, I mean, I guess you could argue it both ways. At the end of the day, listen, we're, we're, we're grown men and we can do what we want. If you're going to step in there and punch each other in the face and spar, um, I mean, Randy Couture had an interesting take on it uh, this week. I'm not sure. He was speaking to Fox, Skip Bayless, I think, and um, he said that uh, he'd never um, sparred in his life, and, and neither have I, where you bring in a professional referee. You know, and if you bring in a professional referee, they were kind of recreating a fight environment. So really, he was there as a practice fight and not so much a warm-up. Right. You know, and if that is the case, because having a professional referee does kind of create that. Now, one, one reason why he maybe had the professional referee was because it's all about visualization. You know, and the more you visualize, that's why some fighters, that's why GSP, um, I, I've worked with GSP's um, sports psychologist, and he was trying to get me to do the same thing, but I didn't do it. What uh, a lot of fighters, and you see John Bones Jones doing it, you see a lot of fighters doing it these days. They walk into the octagon the day of the weigh-ins, and GSP's strength coach, sorry, sports psychologist was telling me, Listen, practice the walkout. Imagine the crowd. Imagine everything. Walk out with your, your team. Give your cornerman a hug. Get into the cage. And, you know, really visualize the whole experience. Imagine the crowd and the referee and Dana White being there and all the rest of it. So that when it actually happens, you've been there. You know, and I, I thought maybe they're bringing in the referee so Connor could kind of, you know, visualize replicate that in his mind and visualize it. Right. Or maybe it's because he was trying to, you know, have a warm up fight. And if he was having a warm up fight and that's what it was, then uh, I guess he can put pictures out Imagine. there. Um, but I got to say, Malinaji isn't coming off too well because he's saying, because first of all, he was adamant that it was a push down, remember? Yeah. He was adamant it was a pushdown, and I'm sorry. What did you think, Luz? you think that was a pushdown? Uh, you know, I don't know. I, mean, I just saw the picture of that, and then I saw the, the like the little 20-second kind of, um, you know, thing that Dana White put out on Instagram or the UFC put out. You know, I don't look, dude. I, I really don't know shit about, like, boxing form. I don't feel like Conor looked that great, but if that was really late in the fight and they were both super beat up and tired, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, what do you think? Do you think Conor looked like, because there was a bunch of people commenting, like, holy shit, Conor looks terrible. Why are you putting this out, Dana? 
when it comes to boxing form, when I start speaking and think I know something, I have no fucking clue, and I always get put in my place by you. I literally want to know what yeah. you thought of that video. Did you look at that video and go, oh, shit, Connor's looking good here, or did you look at it and go, you know, that, that looked kind of sloppy, and it didn't look like you knew what he was doing? Um, okay, so did he, well, so here's the thing, right? When I look at fighters, for example, Dan Henderson. Dan Henderson is somebody that everybody knows has amazing knockout power, and I fought him twice. First time obviously ended very badly for me at UFC 100. My boxing coach at the time, Mark Kinney, who's a fantastic boxing coach, um, said, listen, you're going to have a walk in the park with this guy. He's fucking awful. Look at him. Look at him. And you know what? Technically, when you watch Dan Henderson... His, his striking is, isn't that good. And from a boxing purist standpoint, if you look at him, he's fucking awful, technically bad, all the rest of it. But just because you're not technically perfect and, and your form isn't great and you don't work the way that a boxing coach wants you to, doesn't mean you can't be effective. If you've got the balls to walk forward, take a couple of shots here and there, and you pack dynamite in your hands, you can still be you know, drastically effective as Dan Henderson is and was. And and even in my second fight, he hit me with two of those big shots and cut me open. Of course, the other 25 minutes, I beat the crap out of him. But still, very, very effective. And the point I'm making, the comparison I'm making is, although, you know, you're saying there that some people are saying, wow, Connor looked terrible in that. I didn't think he looked terrible. I actually thought he looked very, very good. But if they're saying from a boxing standpoint, that he, he looked terrible. You, well, maybe, maybe, but you can't deny that he was effective. Yeah, he was hitting. You know, him. He was certainly effective because that one left hand that he landed snapped his head right back. And okay, there were some other shots with those little rabbit punches to the head. Listen, it was all Connor. All right, it was only a 20 second clip. And of course, Malinaji is saying, release the rest of the video. Uh, he's saying rounds one to 10, he dominated. Rounds 11 and 12, he was gassed. Um, you know, and. But, but I feel that he loses all credibility because he said it was a pushdown. It was a pushdown. It didn't look like a pushdown to me. It looked like a legit knockdown. Yeah. Yeah. I um. Look, uh, here's the truth, right? What's happening with all of this? You sound like you are slowly starting to be swayed and think that Connor has a chance. No, no. Listen, he's, he's got to. <sighs> Yeah, I, Wolf listen, I know somebody that, Wolf that, uh, is in the the, um, the Mayweather training camp. Okay, an MMA. I shouldn't say this. I'm giving clues. You could probably work it out. I do this all the time, don't I? But I know somebody in the Mayweather training camp that is saying that Mayweather isn't training very hard. Ooh. He said that Mayweather generally, when he's seen him train, is a thing of beauty. It's a thing of inspiration. That he's, you've never seen a human being work so hard in his life. But he said that on this occasion, he's not working that hard. He's training a bit, but he's not training like he usually does. Now, at the open workout, we saw Floyd Mayweather for around two hours, just got from bag to bag to bag, throwing an absolutely unbelievable amount of punches. Um, it's crazy that a human being could throw that many punches and not be tired. So I kind of thought, well, maybe he is training. Uh, but this guy that I know says that he's not training like he used to. So that obviously sways towards Connor. Uh, if uh, McGregor's, sorry, pardon me, if Mayweather's taking him lightly, um, that's going to be a big mistake for him. But still, you know, I, I would give McGregor a 10% chance of winning this fight. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess. Look, puncher's chance, whatever. I, I'm not swayed anymore. I think, we, I think, I think Connor's going to impress everybody, and he's going to go to a decision with him. Um, I well, don't... well, well. The, the one thing is this as well, which uh, Mayweather's saying. He did, he did a, uh, an interview this week or last week, whenever it was, and he was saying he's going to go forward. He's going to go after McGregor. He's going to knock him out. He said that um, if it goes to a decision, that's a victory for McGregor. Yeah, I agree. Did you see that. Yeah, and I agree with that. I think if if he goes to a decision, simple as that, that is that is embarrassing for Floyd Money yeah, Mayweather. Yeah, but, he but, should but, be able to but, knock but, him but, out. But listen, but listen, look at what's happening. It's the exact same thing as fucking Jose Aldo. Jose Aldo is a counterfighter. He doesn't go forward. McGregor got into his fucking head, and Jose is like, fuck this guy. I'm going to knock him out. Went forward, which he doesn't really do. That's out of his character for the way that he fights. Went forward, super aggressive, got knocked out. Now we see Floyd Mayweather saying, I'm not going to take a backward step. I'm going to go forward. Now, I mm. think that's just Floyd trying to sell the fight. Okay, he's not going to say that I'm going to back up and be defensive. That doesn't sell the fight. But if he is telling the truth, 
that he might fall into the same trap of Jose Aldo because Conor has got the power. All right, Malinaji says it's not oh my god power. He said it's not ridiculous power, but he said the power is there. And if Floyd Mayweather goes forward, listen, is it going to happen? Probably not. But you can see how the, the the parts of the recipe are falling together to where we might have another Jose Aldo situation on our hands. Yeah, well, look, God damn it, if that happens, I, I and I'm calling this right now with everything that's if going. If that happens, I'm going to shoot myself in the face. <laughs> <laughs> if that happens. Not because I'm a hater, but it's just like, what the fuck? Jesus Christ.